Hello everybody, and welcome to Bull Technology. Indie games on Steam are about as common as gum on the bottom of a schoolroom desk, and sadly, most of these games are about as enjoyable as that gum. But for several years, I've been following the development of one indie game in particular, Landlord Super, a quirky construction simulator set in 1980s Great Britain. Developed by Minsk Works, the geniuses behind Jalopy, I had high hopes for this one, and while it is everything I had hoped for in some areas, in others it is sorely unfinished. So today we will give this quirky little game a review. And in the interest of full disclosure, Minsk Works isn't sponsoring this video, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are entirely my own. Landlord Super is a 1980s British construction and life simulator developed by Minsk Works and published by Yogg's Cast Games. Development of Landlord Super began in 2020, and the full release of the game was published several months ago on May 25th of 2023. My initial interest in this game was sparked by my interest in Jalopy, the only other full game that Minsk Works has published. I did a review of Jalopy several years ago, and my verdict was it was a terrific little niche game that was sadly left unfinished. Unfortunately, quite a few parallels can be drawn between my final verdict of Jalopy and my final verdict of Landlord Super. But now on to the review. According to the Landlord Super Steam page, Landlord Super is a first-person life simulation set in the murky midlands of the British Isles during the polarizing years of the 1980s. Build stuff, get drunk, build stuff while getting drunk. Your choice. Landlord Super currently retails for a reasonable $19.99. Landlord Super begins with your character. You play an unemployed person in 1980s Great Britain who has recently taken out a dodgy loan to purchase a rundown property. Much of the gameplay is centered around you repairing this property to make it suitable for tenants, but the game goes far beyond being a landlord simulator. In order to repair your property and do any building, you'll of course need money, and you'll also need money to pay off that aforementioned dodgy loan. You begin the game with no money at all, and given your dire financial situation, you'll first make ends meet by applying for government assistance. Apart from relying on government dole, you'll also take odd jobs around town and collect scrap to earn precious cash. Odd jobs may include washing dishes at the local pub or doing some small construction projects for some of the town's inhabitants. Speaking of the town, this would be a good time to overview Landlord Super's world. Landlord Super is set in the fictional British town of Sheffingham in the 1980s and the world is absolutely charming in every way. While I myself am not British, the world includes all of the appropriate 1980s British hallmarks. Three-wheeled Reliant Robins cruise around town, picturesque stone walls dot the countryside, a pub adorned with the necessary distractions from life sits squarely in the center of town, and polarizing Thatcher-era graffiti is absolutely everywhere. The game completely immerses you in this 1980s British world, and I absolutely love that. It's also almost always raining, which is just so perfect. The world is also full of characters that just couldn't be cast better. There's the scrap lady who hangs around the canal side. There's the pub owner who also runs a small food truck on the outskirts of town. There's the truck driver, or should I say lorry driver, who spends his afternoons at the pub, and countless other in-game characters that just make me laugh and grin in a way that's absolutely so satisfying. Speaking of things that are satisfying, let's briefly talk about the game's graphics and music. No, this game's graphics doesn't resemble Crisis, and nor does it resemble Minecraft. This game's graphics perfectly fit the aesthetics of this game. The VCR-esque aesthetic and simple graphics are just absolutely perfect, and they really capture the time period that this game is set in. And because of these simplistic graphics, the game's system requirements are super low. Now that's a win in my book. Landlord Super's soundtrack is also perfect. The main theme is hilarious and catchy, and the in-game music couldn't fit the game better. 
But if the gameplay isn't good, what use are cute graphics and a catchy soundtrack? I'm going to discuss the gameplay in two parts. First, the construction and landlord simulation aspect of the game, and then other gameplay functions such as things to do in the town. As previously mentioned, you'll begin your property ownership with a tumbled down little cottage, and yes, at this point in the game, you'll be living out of a small camper on the outskirts of town. Building and repairing in Landlord Super is unbelievably detailed. At first, your main goal will be to repair the destroyed cottage, but later on, you'll have the ability to build whole structures from scratch. In order for a property to be suitable for renters, it must meet certain criteria and it'll be your job to get the property in order. This is no easy task, though. Every brick must be carefully placed, using mortar you must mix, using tools you must purchase. Every shingle must be tacked into place, using shingles you must purchase, on roof framing you must carefully construct. Every window, cabinet, and plumbing fixture must be screwed and nailed into place. The building really is super in-depth and time-consuming and quirky and fun. Every little detail is important, and this includes the ratios you use when mixing concrete. Anyway, after the property has been fully repaired or constructed and fully furnished with the necessary equipment, you'll then have the ability to rent it out. At first, you'll only have the ability to rent the property out to lower-end tenants, but as you improve and upgrade the property, you'll have the ability to not only get better tenants, but also receive more rent. Tenants will also damage the property over their stay, and the severity of the damage depends on the time and tenants' negligibility statistics. You'll want to put this rent towards paying off property loans because, yeah, interest rates are insanely high, and later in the game you'll have the ability to purchase other properties, sell your existing property, and even retire once you've earned enough cash. Overall construction and landlord simulation is pretty darn good. It's certainly quirky and fun, but there are also some glaring issues. First, there's just plenty of missing features in the build mode. You can't paint the exterior of buildings, for example, and this is just something that should surely be in the game. Uh, what's more annoying, though, is how the game calculates the amount of rent your property will earn and how much your property is worth. There's virtually no benefit in constructing interior walls or painstakingly creating a pitched roof. These don't affect the rent value of your property. It seems like the biggest contributor to a property's value is simply the size. This really doesn't incentivize the renter to put any actual effort into making the property look nice, which is a real shame. Also a shame is just how buggy the game can be at times. I've had objects go flying that become unrecoverable, walls that disappear mid-construction, and a host of other bizarre bugs and glitches. This would be acceptable for a game in beta, but this game is in full release, and that just doesn't seem acceptable to me. But anyways, what other gameplay does Landlord Super offer? Well, something you'll constantly be keeping an eye on are your in-game stats. Cleanliness, hunger, energy, and even things such as sobriety and your bladder are things you're going to need to keep an eye on. And some conditions can have an effect on your overall stats. Eating too much food can cause you to become overweight, and this will make your mobility more difficult, as an example. There's also lots of other things to keep an eye on in-game like staying out of jail. Yes, that's right, if you happen to get caught cheating the benefits system, or smashing a window, or whizzing on a beat cop, you'll find yourself in prison, so best stick to good behavior. Or even sanctioned bad behavior, because after a day of laying bricks in the pouring rain, you may find yourself escaping to the pub where you can help yourself to a variety of alcoholic beverages, cigarettes, and even some rudimentary gambling. And there's much, much, much more to say about Landlord Super, but I think for this review, we're going to leave it at that. Arr, I am very conflicted on how I feel about this game. Let me explain. Honestly, I absolutely adore this game. I love it to death. It's quirky and funny and oh so enjoyable and satisfying. But at the same time, it's also buggy and unfinished. It's clear to me that this is the Minsk Work playbook. The two-person development studio clearly enjoys working on niche little games, and they do an excellent job at that. But clearly when it comes to orchestrating a level of fit and finish, they fall short. This is the story of Jalopy, an excellent game that just feels like there's so much left to be added and fixed. And this seems like it'll be the story of Landlord Super. 
Mintzquarks recently made the announcement that big updates to Landlord Super are stopping with the full release. And that's just sad. But my final verdict is this. I would absolutely recommend this game to anyone that is willing to overlook its shortfalls. And if you ask me, the problems with this game are more, more than understandable when you consider the humble resources available to its developers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to the pub to get me a pint of Landlord Super. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe. And thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm.